Right here I've got a collection of quadcopters that uh, I wanted to share with you guys and show you a comparison of the SEMA X5C. Here's one without landing skids, one with landing skids and the, and the camera. The Blade QX180, the Blade QX200, and I just put the Phantom 2 in here for size comparison. You can kind of see it is quite a bit bigger and taller than the others. The reason I'm making this video is because I've had the SEMA X5 for a couple months now and I have become a huge fan. It is a super fun to fly, very rugged, very versatile, uh, very beginner friendly yet when you flip the switch into high range it is very fun to fly and acrobatic and not so great for picture taking. I don't really think any of these except for the Phantom are all that great for picture taking. Of course the Phantom's got the the gimbal on the bottom and that makes a big difference. I tried once with my 180 and it was terrible and I never even tried with the QX. Quite honestly the QX was something I bought in hopes that it would be more like what the SEMA is. It's quick, easy to fly, uh, really versatile. The QX actually I <laughs> broke one of the arms on it. Um, it's been repaired but uh, it is not super rugged but um, I'm not here to say these guys are bad because they're both fine copters I'm just here to tell you why if you are interested in getting into flying and improving as a pilot these are the the SEMA X5 is the way to go it is an amazing little copter it's very inexpensive for what you get and it flies better in the wind I think than actually the uh, 180QX. The 200QX does pretty well in the wind because it's fairly heavy and has strong motors, but the price comparison makes a big difference. So let's just take a look at a couple things. So first, the Blade 200QX. This is a very solid little copter and it is really fast and really powerful. I have to say, um, if you want something that's fun to fly and fast and powerful, it's it's a good one. Uh, I have some complaints about it, however. First of all, the batter getting the battery in and out is not easy. Second of all, uh, binding it to the radio and getting it started, getting it uh, initiated, is not super intuitive. And third, the body is kind of fragile. I had a what I didn't think was too bad of a crash and broke one of the arms on it just recently. Um, and then lastly, this thing is 200 bucks. So, and then the batteries are... Uh, fairly expensive as well to go with it. Not to say it's not well built because it is, um, but definitely I feel like it's um, it's it's good, but it's not great for that price. The QX 180, 180 QX is fun to fly as well. It's uh, obviously a very simple frame, airframe. I haven't flown this one that much quite honestly. I have flown it probably 20 times. That's not very much for me. But um, I tried the camera when I first got it. It was terrible. Quality was bad. It was really shaky. I, I felt like the camera was sort of useless on it. This thing's pretty stable and it is pretty fun to fly. Um, but again, this one, the uh, 180QX, is about $120 with no camera and $200 with the camera. So again, pricey for for uh, just a simple fly around thing that isn't uh, really that great for photography. Now the SEMA, um, the camera, it's quite honestly not that great of a camera either. I actually thought it was a little better quality than the uh, Blade, the 180QX, um, but I'm not seriously taking pictures with either of them or taking video with either of them. so. I'm not that concerned about it, but I will say as far as just a fun to fly, rugged, versatile, easy to uh, do tricks with quadcopter, the SEMA um, X5 is amazing. This one here, I've taken the uh, battery door off of it, just put a sticker on the bottom, put some Velcro on it, the battery goes right in there. Some things I love about this, first of all, the LEDs on the bottom are very bright, so when you're flying with it, you can actually tell your orientation really easily. Uh, number two, the, there is actually an on-off switch 
right up here, which a lot of these quads you just you know you have to plug in the battery and it's immediately on. So I like the fact that you can plug the battery in, set it down, and then turn it on so it can calibrate properly. Uh, and then the other big thing is they're super easy to take apart and work on. I actually broke a motor on this one, and you may be able to tell the uh, gear in there is actually uh, brass, whereas the others are plastic. That's because I, the small gear, that's because I replaced it uh, with a motor that I got on Amazon. You get a counterclockwise and a clockwise motor for $9. That's together. So they're, what, $4.50 each. Really can't beat that value. Then there's a bunch of little screw holes in the bottom. You can just take the take those all out with a tiny little Phillips head screwdriver, pull the body in half, and then on the inside, it's basically just a, a flight controller, some sort of board, wires that go out to each of the four motors, and all I had to do was solder the wires back together and the thing was good to go. So I have two of them. This one I have the camera on. It does come with... Uh, does come with the landing skids as you can see this one has and obviously if you have the camera on you need the landing skids and then and then it also comes with uh, prop guards but I'm not a big fan of the prop guards because they make it heavier they make it less aerodynamic they cut your flight time and they uh, cut your ability to do cool flips and stunts and stuff like that you can still do flips but it's just so much more versatile and and uh, aerobatic when you take the skids off the bottom and take the don't put on the prop guards and take the camera off this strip down version right here and even no battery door just a just a piece of velcro on the bottom this guy will will run and we'll really get after it and i'll show you here in a second one other thing i wanted to say quickly about the sema and the pricing is the batteries the batteries you can get uh five of them for less than 30 bucks so about six dollars a piece and they are just standard little um, 3.7 volt, 600 milliamp lipos, and they do a great job. They give you about 10 minutes of flight time, and a little more if you take all the all the uh, prop guards and skids and battery door and everything off, like I have on this one. I did want to talk a little bit about the remote that comes with the SEMA X5. It feels very cheaply made. But you know it does the job and it really um if as long as you don't go too far out of range it actually controls the thing very well because it's extremely responsive there is a high and a low um range for the sema it's this button up here this allows you to switch between uh, low and high low is great for beginners high is better if you've had a little experience and then the button on the right is for picture taking and also for doing flips if you don't have the camera attached so I was just bragging about how rugged the um, SEMA is, and guess what? It is raining cats and dogs out here. Um, we need the rain, so I'm happy to have it, but i uh, not sure how we're going to do here in the rain, but you know what? I was just saying uh, how versatile and tough and rugged this thing is, and also inexpensive, so I thought I'd just go ahead and give it a shot. So I just put the battery in. You can see, like I said, I've got a little uh, Velcro attachment here. I just put some GoPro stickers on it, uh, on the back of the Velcro, because it was sticky, and I needed something to make it unsticky. So I'm going to set it down here and make it flat. I can also tell you the wind's blowing at a pretty good clip here. So turn on the radio, go up, down, okay, I think we're locked. Uh, maybe I'll come over here. And let's see how this guy does with uh, this much wind and rain. Okay, so I'm in uh, I'm in low mode right now, and you can see how hard it's raining out there. Seems to be doing okay in the rain. Just doing a little hovering hovering here. Just uh, gonna put it in high mode. There's high. You can see uh, it really gets after it in high. Try not to put it down in the wet grass. It's also uh, it's also fairly uh, put it back in low. You can see it's fairly maneuverable even in here in this tight space. 
try not to run into the hammock. Yeah, made it through. Let's try it one more time. A little smoother. There we go. Now, here's a couple cool things. Here's the flip. You just push the right button down and say which direction you want to flip. Oh. There, well, there it went. One other thing I really like about this guy is you can uh, kill the throttle and it comes down really quickly and it always seems to recover. So let's try the flip one more time. Bring it over a little closer. Right. There we go. Try it one more time. There's, in whichever direction you push it is the direction it's supposed to flip. So if you want it to flip forward, backwards, left, left, left. Will it, will it flip left? It doesn't seem to want to flip left. There we go. Right. And let's do one backwards flip. Okay, backwards flip. There we go. Now you want to have a little bit of altitude when you flip, although it does do a pretty good job of not, um, not going down too hard. So I'm bringing it under the cover. You can see it's pretty wet, but it's hanging in there. Like I said, um, very rugged little machine, pretty lightweight, but still manages to hold its own in the wind and the rain. Um, I would say it's uh, better in the wind than the uh, 180QX um, because it's got a little more mass to it. I'm flying under that water. Whoa, look at that. Made it. Let me see if I can flip it under this cover here. Might be crazy, but we'll give it a try. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, there we go. Did it. Backwards flip. So, like I said, great little, uh, great little trainer, great little quad for learning how to fly, learning how to do pirouettes, learning how to fly forward and. Uh, turn around backwards and still know which direction you're facing. Definitely a uh, good one for that because if you do crash it, it's super lightweight. It's not going to hurt anybody. It's not going to break anything. and It's probably not going to break itself. And the uh, bright, I meant, meant to mention, you can see the bright LEDs this thing has. The green is in the back and the red is in the front. These are really bright enough to tell you which direction you're facing. So you can actually know that uh, as long as you remember that red is in the front, you can know pretty well which direction you're going. Let's send it out in the rain one more time. Uh, look at it. It's getting pummeled, but it's hanging in there. Get back under here. Yeah, baby. So, that is the SEMA X5C. Awesome. Hey, and since it's since it's raining so hard outside, I thought I would show you one more thing that it can be a good indoor flyer too if you've got the space. Um, obviously, you don't want to run into your TV or your clock or your wife's stuff because she wouldn't be very happy. But you can uh, you can take it around inside a little bit and do some stuff with it. Don't know if I'd do a flip in here because I'd probably uh, end up getting in trouble somehow, but uh, flies really well inside. Obviously, if you have a uh, high ceiling, that helps, and if you have the ability to uh, fly it in high and low gear, have some fun uh, chasing the dog with it, taking it up around the higher part of the ceiling. And again, you can see how bright those lights are. It really helps when you're trying to orient yourself as to which way is front and which way is back. So in conclusion, if you are interested in becoming a better pilot or just having a quad that you can hand over to your friends and not feel like you're paranoid about it uh, crashing um, because this one can crash and it holds up pretty well, I highly recommend the SEMA X5, X5C, or X5C1. All of them are great. Um, I believe the X5C1 is the latest and greatest with updated firmware or something, but I know that um, I have these two, and both of them are just fantastic to fly 
very easy to learn on and a lot of fun even if you're experienced uh, for racing, doing dives, and all kinds of fun stuff. And once again, you really can't beat the cost. The X5C and X5C1 are a great value for what you're paying and I would definitely recommend them as a beginner and or lender and or just having fun uh, quad over the Blade 200QX and over the Blade 180QX. Um, you really just can't compare it. I mean, for the price of those, those the blades, you can buy three or four of these SEMAs and just, you know, go through them and they come with spare props. They come with uh, one battery. The batteries are cheap to buy. I recommend buying a bunch of them and I hope you'll go out and get yourself one and have a lot of fun flying. Thanks for watching. Bye.